We like to call the order uh, Monday, April 2nd, Albany Common Council meeting to order, please. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Plaris. <clears throat> Mr. Nane. Present. Mr. Ballerin. Here. Mr. Conti. Here. Mr. O'Shea. Here. Ms. Fahey. Here. Ms. Farrell. Here. Mr. Flynn. Here. Mr. Hoey. Mr. Igo. Mr. Johnson. Here. Kimbrough. Here. Ms. Love. Here. Mr. O'Brien. Here. Mr. Robinson. Here. Ms. 14 present. Thank you. Um, can we all stand and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? And after that, for a moment of silence. Thank you. Now we'll move into next item on our agenda is a public comment period. Can the clerk please call the first speaker? It's Abby Castillo. here before you guys because I'm looking to get Clinton Avenue, the block of 352 Clinton Avenue. That's in between Lexington and Henry Johnson, named after my grandmother, the late Abby Lee Brace, uh, sister to Nebraska Brace. And I have just a brief description I'd like to read you guys if, pop, if, pop, excuse me, if possible. Um, she helped create and pioneer various community organizations during the 70s along with the support of Father Peter Young Bishop Howard Hubbard, and the Capital District Catholic Charity Society, which includes the Urban League, the NAACP, the Albany County Methadone Clinic, the Albany County Lead Poisoning Screening Clinic, PAD, which is Parents Against Drugs, the Albany Neighborhood Police Unit, the St. Peter's Family Health Clinic, and the Capital District Psychiatric Center. She assisted in starting the Albany Boxing League, the South End Drill Team, and the Sheridan Hollow Homeless Network. Along with her colleagues, she served as Girl Scout leaders while creating the United Methodist Society after school program. She served as a past chairman of the West Hill Improvement and Beautification Committee. She was an active and elected committee woman for the South End as well as the West End Hill communities of Albany for 16 years. She served as a community political advisor to the former mayor of Albany, the late Honorable Thomas Whalen, the Honorable Paul Cheeseman, and the former family court judge and the Honorable Thomas Keegan. She was an active member of the Albany Arbor Hill Democratic Committee. She worked during her retirement with the City of Albany Quackenbush Square Planetarium and Visitors, Visitor Center. She was a congregant of the Wilburn Temple Church of God in Christ, where she worked to support and create the Church Restoration Committee, the Mother's Board, and the We 12 Committee. In addition, she served as a safe haven for women coming from out of um, down south who came from domestic violence situations and other hardships where she provided them shelter, food, clothing, anything they needed until they were able to get on their feet and take care of themselves. Um, she did a lot of these things without looking for anything from anyone, not asking for any favors or looking for anything in return. A simple thank you was enough that pleased her heart where she can sleep comfortably at night knowing she did something good. And I think naming the street after her would be a very big thank you to her and everything that she's done. I also have 302 signatures and an online petition where those numbers haven't been counted yet. And that's it. Okay, thank you. In the public comment period, uh, council members can't respond to your statements. It's time where you say whatever you want for five minutes and then that's it. So that's why they're not responding. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anything you'd like us to have, you can pass to the clerk if you like, Ms. Castillo. It's 
Just pass it to the clerk. Thank you, and we'll make copies. You. You're very much welcome. Can the clerk please call the next speaker? Stephen Downs. Good evening. My name is Steve Downs. I'm a former chief attorney with the Commission on Judicial Conduct, and I came here to speak in favor of a Albany City resolution to the New York State Legislature supporting the creation of a commission on prosecutorial conduct. Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed here. I th thought that this uh, resolution had already been introduced. Uh, I'm not sure that it has, but it will be shortly. <coughs> And so I'm going to talk about it, <coughs> excuse me, even though uh, I'm not 100% sure it's been introduced. But similar resolutions have been introduced in the cities of Hudson and Yonkers and uh, Syracuse, and they've been passed. Uh, and we're expecting to get a lot of other cities around the country, uh, around the state, to be passing this kind of resolution supporting the creation of the Commission on Prosecutorial Conduct. And it's very important that Albany also go on record. Um, I'm involved in a, well, I, as former uh, chief counsel to the Commission on Judicial Conduct, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, as former counsel to the Commission on Judicial Conduct, uh, this was an organization that for 40 years has been uh, providing oversight for judicial uh, officers, judges. And it's been very successful, it's been highly praised. Um, and the, the Commission on Prosecutorial Conduct would be as close as possible to the Commission on Judicial Conduct under the theory that why should we provide oversight to judges and not to uh, uh, prosecutors? Why would we want the judges to be ethical and follow as close as possible to the ethical guidelines and not have the same uh, standard for prosecutors? Um, my, I'm involved with a group right now of exonerees, people who uh, spent decades in jail and then were released and have gotten together and have said, in each of our cases, uh, we spent years in jail for crimes we did not commit because of prosecutorial misconduct. And this has to stop. This is uh, a time for it. In New York State, is second only to Texas in the number of wrongful convictions every year. The cost to the state is enormous. Uh, our group, it could happen to you, itchy, itchy, could happen to you, uh, did a study of 10 just recent cases that came up of wrongful convictions, and collectively we uh, found that they cost the state $118 million. But that is only scratching the surface of the cost to the state of wrongful prosecutions, wrongful convictions. Um, Every other profession that you can think of has some kind of oversight body. Prosecutors are the one group that don't. Uh, in theory, there is a grievance committee of the appellate division, but for decades they have not provided any meaningful oversight. Um, and that is why a commission which is completely independent and which can uh, operate across the state on a statewide level is, is necessary. Uh, when there are no consequences for breaking the rules, uh, no reform is possible. And today you hear in the legislature talk about uh, criminal justice reform, all sorts of different ideas, but if there is no way to enforce those reforms, it's all meaningless. Um, and so the bottom line, just I'll end with this question, is if you have a complaint about the ethics of a prosecutor, where do you go right now? Where do you go? You don't, there is no body that you can turn to. Across the river, we have the De Rensselaer DA is under indictment. This is very serious. One Somebody minute, should have looked Downs. into it. But the point would be, even if he was found innocent, is he ethically entitled to hold that office? And right now, there is no body that is able to make that kind of determination. So I urge you to, to pass this resolution when you get it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can the clerk please call the next speaker? <clears throat> Alana Klein.
Just quick, I'd like to second both of the previous two speakers. I agree with both of those um, points that they made. Um, good evening, Mr. President and members of the council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you tonight. Trayvon Martin killed for fighting in self-defense after being stalked by someone on neighborhood watch. Result of the trial of the civilian, not guilty. Fernando Castillo, killed because he informed the officer during a routine traffic stop that he had a legal handgun. Result of the trial of the officer, not guilty. Freddie Gray, arrested for alleged possession of a switchblade, died in police custody after being beaten and then given a rough ride. Result of the trial of the officers, not guilty. Sandra Bland, arrested after being profiled for a routine traffic stop, died under mysterious circumstances in police custody. Result of the investigation of the department, no charges filed. Tamir Rice, shot on sight by police while playing with a toy gun in a park. Result of the investigation of the officer, no charges filed. Mike Brown, killed by police after allegedly stealing cigars from a convenience store. Result of the investigation of the officer, no charges filed. Samuel DuBose, shot and killed by an officer during, during a routine traffic stop. Result of the trial of the officers, charges dismissed. Alton Sterling, shot and killed by police while pinned to the ground by multiple officers for selling CDs. Result of the investigation of the officer, no charges filed. Eric Gardner, strangled to death in a chokehold for selling Lucy cigarettes. Result in the investigation of the officer, no charges filed. Laquan McDonald, shot multiple times in the back and killed for walking away from police and allegedly failing to follow commands. This, trial is, this officer is currently scheduled for trial. Charles Kinsey, shot and wounded by police while caring for an autistic man who was playing with a toy truck. Kinsey was laying on the ground with both arms in the air, begging not to be shot. This officer is currently scheduled for trial. Stefan Clark, shot and killed by police, unarmed and was holding a cell phone. I can't predict the future, but I sure as anything can tell you them starting to see a pattern. Seldomly, an officer is convicted of wrongdoing in the shooting death of an unarmed black man but all too frequently, justice is not served. Occasionally, the officer involved is fired, but that does nothing to change the facts. Dylan Roof killed nine churchgoers and injured one while shouting racial profanities. Taken into custody without a shot being fired, the cops even bought him fast food on the way to prison. Only one of these names was that of a white person. Only one of these names was someone who was not shot, harmed, or killed. Only one of these names belongs to someone who had the gun with malintent and who committed a crime that would justify the use of deadly force. I'll leave it to you to figure out which one. For far too long, police in the United States have operated under a shoot first, ask questions later mentality. If you're going to pull that trigger, you need to be sure that the subject presents a threat to yourself or others. If you feel for your own personal safety for the simple reason that you smell marijuana, as was the case <clears throat> for the officer who shot, shot Fernando Castillo, you are in the wrong line of work. Pulling that trigger means forever altering the lives of dozens of people, not just the person in your crosshairs. Thank you for your time. Boycott the NRA, Black Lives Matter. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Seeing there is no more people signed up for public comment, we will deem public comment period at this time closed. Moving on, approval of minutes from previous meeting. Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the uh, adoption of the March 19th uh, Do we get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes approved. Moving on to reports of standing committees. Mr. O'Brien. The uh, General Services Committee is going to meet on April 17th to have a discussion on how street paving decisions are made. You should all have, uh, have been sent, uh, I believe Michelle sent everyone a copy of the assessment criterion for street paving as well as the most recent uh, street by street, block by block survey of the whole road system in the city of Albany, which dates from 2015. Um, 
So that will be the basis of our discussion, and we are going to have City Engineer Randy Milano and uh, Commissioner uh, Dan Mirabili. The other uh, point of interest with the General Services Committee is that the pesticide plan for city use in 2018 uh, is on file now with the city clerk's office. Anyone who wishes to review it, it is available. And if need be, we could convene a meeting of the General Services Committee if there are questions and we need to bring in uh, the folks from, uh, if Scott Gallup is the principal author of it from the golf course and he's the uh, certified pest control person for the city. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Fahey? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Planning Committee met on March 21st uh, to discuss resol Resolution 132318R, which is a reauthorization of the um, capitalized, or I'm sorry, the Capital Resource Corporation. Um, that uh, resolution was amended. Uh, part of the resolution was to make it permanent. There was a, a uh, council members decided that that should be extended uh, for two years, so it'll come up again for reauthorization, and then passed with a positive recommendation. Um, and then the planning committee met on March 27. We received an update from the Sustainability Advisory Committee, and as well as an update from planning staff and the energy manager that um, the city has uh, really great discussion, a lot of really terrific projects. Um, you know, just to give you an example of the work the energy manager is doing, talked about uh, switching over our lights to LED, save, which saved us 120,000 a year. Um, and, then the, and then the big ticket item was purchase of our street lights. Mm -hmm. Quite a long and involved process, but in year seven, they hope to save one and a half million dollars. Um, and then there were just many other projects that are underway. Uh, a lot of things that uh, we can all be very proud of that um, we're doing to create a more sustainable environment here in Albany. Um, planning Committee has two upcoming meetings uh, to interview candidates. The first is on April 19th, Thursday, April 19th. It, uh, we will interview a can candid candidates for the IDA board. There's one position there. And then on Wednesday, April 25th, and Thursday, April 26th, Planning Committee will meet again to interview candidates for the Sustainability Advisory Committee. Thank you, Ms. Fahey. Uh, Mr. Kimbrough. Thank you. Ms. Doshe. Thank you, Mr. President. The Finance Committee um, met uh, last week on April 19th and 20th, two weeks ago, excuse me, uh, to interview candidates for the Board of Assessment Review. We had uh, seven wonderful uh, candidates. The choice was very difficult, uh, but the committee did decide to put forth uh, the recommendation for uh, Mr. Michael Bergman on, uh, on, um, for that, which uh, it will be moving tonight. Uh, we also met tonight uh, to discuss the five bond ordinances for the Albany Police Department. Four of those were passed out of committee, uh, one of them with a reduction of $468,000 to uh, $632,000, that's for uh, roadway safety. Uh, they are utilizing some uh, prior bonds, and we did have a discussion about utilizing some more of the money that exists in uh, prior authorizations. Uh, the next meeting of the Finance Committee is on April 10th at 5.30 in the second floor courtroom, and we will be discussing the six bond ordinances for the Albany Fire Department and also uh, Parks and recreation. Uh, we will also be discussing the fifth bond ordinance for the Albany Police Department with regard to, to some 
of infrastructure uh, building improvements uh, that uh, we discussed in committee tonight. Uh, that's the end of my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Reports of any ad hoc committee? Yes, no, Mr. Conte. Mr. Conte? No. Uh, don't have any reports. Thank you. Moving on to this item on the agenda, ordinance introduced. Uh, Ms. Duche. Yes, Mr. President, I notice uh, ordinance 24.41.18R uh, for introduction. Yes. And I, that R is an uh, error there. Can the clerk please read the ordinance? An ordinance authorizing and directing the grant to Albany Medical Center of an easement in the city of Albany over a portion of the city right of way of Myrtle Avenue for the construction and maintenance of a retaining wall and relating footings as set forth below. Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. Conti. Mr. Kimbrough. Thank you, Mr. President. I noticed Ordinance 233218 and asked for his passage. Can the clerk please read the ordinance, please? An ordinance accepting the conveyance of all right, title, and interest, and the, and the dedicating to the public use for street purposes certain lands constituting a portion of lands known as Birch Hill Road in the city of Albany, New York. Is there any discussion on this ordinance? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Anane? Yes. Mr. Ballerin? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Mr. O'Shea? Yes. Ms. Fahey? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. It's 14 affirmative. Uh, ordinance passes. Moving on to considerations of resolutions. Resolutions introduced. Ms. Duche. Thank you, Mr. President. I notice resolution 14.41.18R uh, for introduction and I ask for its passage. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution of the Common Council appointing Michael Bergen as a member of the Board of Assessment Review. Any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Anane? Yes, co-sponsor. Mr. Ballerin? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes, co-sponsor. Mr. O'Shea? Yes. Ms. Fahey? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Hoey? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? It's 14 affirmative. Resolution passes. Continuing on resolution introduced, Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. And also resolution uh, 1521.18R uh, and request for help. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution of the Common Council enacting a home <coughs> rule message to the New York State Legislator requesting the enactment of Senate Bill number 7965, Assembly Bill number uh, 158, entitled An Act to Amend. Chapter 454 of the Laws of 2010, amending the vehicle and traffic law relating to authorizing a pilot residential, residential parking permit system in the state of Albany in relation to the effectiveness thereof. Thank you. Mr. Conti. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. The remaining resolutions are held in the executive agenda item number 2 by I notice resolution 132318R ask for its passage as amended. Can the clerk please read the resolution? Resolution of the Common Council consented to the amendment of the City of Albany Capital Resource Corporation Certificate of, in <coughs> of Incorporation authorizing the continuation of the authority of the City of Albany Capital Resource Corporation to issue obligations to finance projects to be undertaken by the corporation. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, can the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Anane. 
Yes. Mr. Ballin? Yes. Mr. Conti? Yes. Mr. O'Shea? Yes. Ms. Fahey? Yes. Ms. Farrell? Yes. Mr. Flynn? Yes. Mr. Howey? Yes. Mr. Igo? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Kimbrough? Yes. Ms. Love? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Supporting the permanent? Resolution passes. Seeing no commissioner deeds at all on the desk. Um, move to miscellaneous. No comment. Mr. Conti. Second. Second. Meeting adjourned.